Good morning and welcome to AXA Coral Live and it's wonderful to have you join us here at the Kamabi Research Station in Curaçao. Now we're here for the next two weeks and we'll be introducing you to the various aspects of the coral ecosystem. It's a beautiful morning this morning and we'll be doing a three types of broadcast now that's a live investigation that's an activity um, to join along with your class and this morning it feels more like a cookery show but we'll come to that just in a minute we'll also be doing expert interviews now just behind us here don't worry about turning the camera around Ellie uh, but, but behind us here is a research station and that means it's a, a laboratory space, living space for scientists studying all different kinds of research topics connected to the reef. That buzz you might hear behind us, that's the wet lab where various experiments are taking place. And what's fantastic is that a number of those scientists will be joining us for sessions over the next two weeks, this afternoon and this morning we have Kristen Mahava, Dr. Kristen Mahava, who will be coming to share her insight into coral restoration absolutely fantastic and we'll also be having ask me anything sessions and that's where you can just pile in your questions either submitted online beforehand be in touch with the team in London if you're not sure how to do that or using the live chat on YouTube so do remember you need a YouTube account to join in but hoping to see your comments coming up on the live chat there. So really, really um, excited to have you join us. And what we're going to do now is we're going to dive straight into the incredible edible polyp live investigation. So we're really working out how does this form? How? is the reef formed and this is a very very old bit of what looks like star coral um, and is um, not an animal but feels like a big big of rock now the reef this amazing three-dimensional living space is created by a tiny animal called the coral polyp and out here behind me we've got a bit of a shelf we've got a little bit of um, brain coral scattered around the bottom here and then there's a really nice drop off and a variety of different corals and sponges going down on the main reef and what we're going to find out today is how how does this get made where does this rocky structure come from and to do that we need to find out about this amazing animal called the coral polyp and this is where <laughs> Coral Live sort of changes. I seem to put sand all over my breakfast, uh, but it's it's um, just gone seven in the morning, so it's probably breakfast time for me. I know we've got schools from the Dominican Republic, England, Egypt, Greece, India, Indonesia, Israel, Nigeria, the Philippines, and Scotland are uh, joining us. So you, hopefully most of you have had your breakfast by now, um, but um, do join in um, wherever you are and learn more about the coral polyp. Now, hopefully. Uh, most of you know about the jellyfish, and jellyfish is a sort of you know animal like this, yeah, sort of tentacles floating around in the water, a bit stingy. Now, some of you um, may know about the sea anemone, and that's basically a jellyfish that's a bit smaller and stuck uh, to the bottom of the sea. But those of you have, who have seen Finding Nemo, that's the tentacly animal that uh, Nemo and family live in, the anemone. So, so Nemo is an anemone fish or a plant fish. Now coral is related to both the jellyfish and the sea anemone. They're both a type of animal called Nideria. And they're slightly special. So first of all, we're going to get this sort of, if I can make sure um, that all students um, around and about, um, you should all have a banana um, you just need a section of banana, really, uh, or a marshmallow, depending on how sweet your tooth is. Um, we're going to go for, for banana here. Very, very important. Uh, you'll also need some biscuits. Um, apparently, we can't find round biscuits on Curacao. They're all sort of oval, but there we go. Round is fine. 
Uh, you also need some wonderful stringy sweetie things. Uh, some sugar sprinkles or sweets. Mine are covered in sand, so that's, that's going to be crunchy. And um, jam. Uh, this is uh, peach flavor. Um, so whatever flavor you like. Um, this is peach, um, but the most important thing is is, is no bits in it. Um, that makes it much much easier. Um, it's going to keep keep us sort of on online um, and see see where we're going. Okay, we've got two. Uh, year six classes at first and primary school here ready and waiting uh, well hopefully um, that um, we uh, something's happening um, so we might just give it a few minutes um, just to see how uh, the live chat and make sure everybody's on the right channel um, coming coming through so <laughs> if we can just make sure that um, the mr. Uh, Wicks um, is on the right place that we have um, uh, this link is the link that one that teachers have and it isn't working um, well hopefully um, they should just be going to the um, Digital Explorer um, homepage um, that's where they should be they shouldn't be going to um, they shouldn't have any link except for the the homepage link is that right Ellie um, so it's live we've got it live here it's live in Curacao um, so uh, if someone can just let, let us know what, what's going on there. So you shouldn't be having to go anywhere. It, uh, um, and let's see, YouTube, and come to our it's channel. Lagging a bit. It's lagging a bit, is it? Yeah, it's a uh, little bit buffery. But it's okay. Um, just Explorer. Okay, so we're, we're here. I just need to... Um, find out how to get back to us uh, my channel and there we go we're live now it's on the home page and we have people watching um, but we don't have anybody joining the live chat yet and so do um, make sure that you're on the right uh, right one I will copy that over So you shouldn't be anywhere except for the the home page. So if the team in London, just let me know um, that as long as you're on the home page, you're fine. Okay, so just waiting for the team in London to confirm that we're fine, or that they can see us. We can see us in <laughs> online in Curacao, um, but just wait for that confirmation to come through uh, from the team uh, in London. So, um, yeah, they're so really great to to have that message coming through. Any confirmation coming through would be fantastic. Um, I think we're online. Um, but we've got four people watching. Um, okay, great. Um, you can see me. That's fantastic. Uh, can you can you chat to me? Um, just to see see if you can make make the, the live chat work. We are sending the correct link now. Um, well, hopefully, yeah. Great. Okay. So I'll just keep on stalling a bit um, to to um, not stalling but, but chatting to you just 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 as uh, the team in London um, hello from London fantastic um, if you can uh, for some reason we've got teachers on another link um, I'm not quite sure how that happened um, if we can get them all here that would be absolutely amazing and then and then we'll we'll crack on Uh, so just just to I mean, if we go through a few uh, technical basics, um, just while we're, we're getting that sorted. So every single broadcast we show, the only th only place you need to be is the YouTube channel homepage. So everything will just come up there automatically. 
So don't worry about going to any sort of different URLs or live event streams or anything like that. Make sure you're on the homepage and when we start broadcasting, uh, that's where it's going to show up. So no need to go anywhere else. Uh, second, uh, just to make sure that if you want to take part in the live chat, you do need a YouTube account. So you sign up with a Google account and then get a YouTube channel using that. Uh, the other way to get your students' questions answered is, of course, to send those in um, in advance um, to us um, at Digital Explorer. And the office in London will make sure that those get to us out here in Curaçao. Um, so I'm just waiting um, for confirmation that we've got all the schools who should be online um, joining us um, haven't been um, sent somewhere else and are actually with us now so just waiting for that confirmation to come through um, and then we'll be able to continue um, so just to give you an idea of uh, some of the species um, we're going to find here uh, Ellie and I we went out for um, um, little swim yesterday there's um, some nice parrot fish um, they're nibbling away um, we had um, a barracuda um, uh, uh, was just lurking in the shallows here it was quite quite funny we sort of took about sort of three strokes and there was a barracuda about this big sort of staring staring at us so they've got these sort of sort of they look like a sort of like a they've got the sort of what am I saying the sort of sticky out bottom jaw of a of a you know of a terrier um, and so, so that's out there. Um, wonderful to see the is it the sergeant majors. Those, yeah, sergeant majors. Quite a few of them out further right. We're going to look at. We're trying to find some sponges. Um, so we're trying to find some sponges further right, and I think we found some good ones. So hopefully we'll be able to get the underwater camera uh, down there um, later this week or maybe next week, and we'll do some experiments with sponges underwater. And get those out live to you as well. So there's been lot, lots going on here. Fantastic to have first and primary um, with us. Is it year six classes with us? Uh, Mr. Wicks's um, year six classes um, uh, coming, coming, coming in. Um, so that's really, really great. Um, so I'm just going to kind of have to um, crack on a little bit um, to make sure that we get started with this. Um, live investigation. So to go over again what you need, you need to have a banana or a marshmallow and that's going to be the body of the coral animal. You need to have some biscuits and these can be really any shape but roundish is good. Apparently they only have oval ones on Curacao. Uh, you need to have sand all over your sweets. No, don't get sand on your sweets. You need to have uh, stringy sweets, and these are going to be the tentacles. Because remember, that the coral polyp, the animal that makes up the reef, related to the jellyfish. And then we're going to have some little sweets, uh, sugar sprinkles, greens good, uh, M&Ms. We'll talk about the M&Ms a bit later. All other sugar coated chocolate sweets are available um, and jam uh, peach uh, seems to be the pre preferred flavor in Curacao but any any will do any fruit will do and uh, just make sure it hasn't got too many lumps in it bits and lumps okay so we're going to start off now so if all the students watching what I need you to do is start off with I'm going to move my things over there whatever get your marshmallow or a bit of banana okay I'm gonna do now so this is this is we've called it science this is essentially Curacao cookery show um, it's 7 15 in the morning here so this is really me making my breakfast in Curacao and, and by way of doing so, hopefully, you being able to learn a little bit about the amazing animal that makes up the reef. So, for the body of the polyp, you want a section of banana, sort of marshmallow-sized, about that big. Um, 
And to give you an idea, they're tiny wee mostly. Ellie, can you get a zoom in on the on the star core and get so zoom in onto the little holes where the um, the polyps live? Awesome. So that gives you an idea of the size of these these wee wee beasties um, making up the reef. But we'll make one a bit bigger today. Now, what you need to do is get your um, bit of uh, marshmallow or um, banana, and we're going to give it a mouth. Now, please use a toothpick. We couldn't find any toothpicks, so I have a, a sharp thing. You should not be using this in your classroom. Uh, and make a mouth, because of course it's got to eat stuff. And you can see the mouth, mouth there, but in the top. Cool. And then we're going to give it some tentacles. So we're just going to make some little holes around the edges here, and we're going to give it some tentacles. And the tentacles are made from your, so the mosquitoes everywhere this morning. Um, going to be made from your sugary, sugary thing here. Great. And this is quite tricky. So remembering. Uh, that the oh, the coral polyp, and hopefully you're all doing this with me, you'll find them equally tricky. Now we should try and get six tentacles in, because uh, hard corals, the kind of corals that make up the reef, have multiples of six tentacles per polyp. Hopefully you're not being bitten by mosquitoes as you're doing this. There we go. How are people getting on? Uh, Mead School, lovely to have you with us. How are your incredible edible polyps getting on? Are you using who's using marshmallow, and who's using banana? I'm going to cheat slightly. No, I'm not going to cheat. Don't cheat. I've got one more to go. So um, I want to see. Do are the Mead School using? Uh, squidgy tropical bananas for breakfast. This is amazing. That's going to break. So if anyone's doing better than me and has got already got all six tentacles in, is it starting to look like that? I've got four. Give me a shout on the live chat if you think I'm allowed to get away with four, or you need a bit more time to start getting your tentacles in. I hope, hopefully you're doing okay. Is the bug spray behind? Sorry. Do do, do apologise. Thank you very much. It is quite hard to concentrate um, at the moment. There we go. That's going to be all over my breakfast now, but there we go. <laughs> but two more in. One and go in there. Why are there always multiples of six tentacles found? I don't know what why it is. Um, you get other corals, like soft corals, octocorals, got eight. Um, I suppose it's a little bit, bit, bit like um, insects having six legs. Uh, I will, we will ask. Um, Dr. Kristen in uh, about an hour's time. I'm sure that's one of those questions that even sort of like scientists who've been studying this for years go, I've never really thought about that. It's a great question. Really, really great question. So, here we go. So you should be looking a bit like that at the moment. So hopefully we've got you all looking a bit like that. Now, if you remember, if this was a sea anemone, it would, yeah, it would be stuck to the bottom. So we're going to stick it to the bottom of the ocean, and we're going to use a biscuit to represent the rocky substrate. Now, that's a technical word uh, for the seabed. Now, corals like um, rocky or hard um, seabed bottom. Uh, they don't like sand um, or algae or seaweed, so we're looking for a nice hard place to settle. 
and we're going to stick jam okay we're going to come to <laughs> sorry everybody I can do this. Okay, Ellie can do this. Um, do corals have predators? Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> it's the hardest pot of jam to open in the... It's open. Amazing. Thank you very much. Rather than watch me sort of gurn on screen. Uh, here we go. Spread this on. So we're going to come on to one of the clever things they do to create that sort of rock seal and um, we'll talk about some of the predators and the sort of ecology of the coral um, just in a bit. So there's a really disgusting coral predator found mainly in Australia and we can talk about that late, later. But there we go, squidgy, nice and squidgy. Now so hopefully all of you will have your coral polyp there. Now, Talking about predators, and it's a great point coming in from the Mead School. As you can see, we can get a zoom in on, on the polyp on the plate. You can see the sort of soft tissue of the polyp um, would be exposed here. So, what the polyp does, and this is really cool, and it comes back to this big, bigger rock, is that they take limestone calcium carbonate from the water and they make this amazing structure and this cup uh, calcium carbonate cup limestone cup that they live in called the coralite Oop. and what to just make that all we're going to do is we're just going to break off um, bits of this um, biscuit if you need a little bit more jam to stick it together Membrane, mucous membrane, <laughs> jam. Um, that's great. A little bit of jam on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that, and it's basically like sticking it on here. So they're building these structures sticking to the rocks by secreting the limestone um, from from the water. So your edible polyp should be starting to look a bit like this. One of the problems though is that with these tentacles what they're doing is they're trying to find um, zooplankton um, like copepods, small sort of shrimp like creatures or related to shrimp and use their tentacles, pull those into the mouth. But if you have this idea of the tropics, um, where we are, and that's really where these reef-growing corals are found, these sort of hard corals, tropical hard corals across this band in the tropics. Now the problem with tropical waters, and you may have sort of seen this from sort of advertisements or films, is they're very, very clear. Now clear water means that it is nutrient poor. So there's not a lot of life in there for the coral polyp to eat and to gather in. So to grow these amazing reef structures, the coral polyp has done something very, very cunning. It has a relationship, a symbiotic relationship, with um, an algae called Suxanthelli. And so the reason why you get these amazing colours on the reef with browns and greens and reds are because that's the colour of the algae um, living inside living inside the coral tissue. You do sometimes get some little bit of bonkers colours. Mainly the bonkers colours are sponges, um, but sometimes you get a little bit of blue um, on coral and that's normally some sort of sunblock protein um, to protect it from um, the UV light. So, these are rather big, but the M&Ms are easier to show you. So, to represent the algae that lives inside the 
coral tissue. It's a bit like sort of having a vegetable garden inside you to get your food from rather than you know going and going and picking it. So your coral polyp should start to look like this. We've got the body, that same body as a sea anemone. We've got the tentacles to catch about 20-30% of their food. That 70-80% of their energy is coming from the photosynthesis from this algae that lives inside their body. And that gives them that, that turbocharge to build the amazing structure of the reef. We've got the coralite, the structure of this amazing three-dimensional shape, this sort of rocky shape that they make from the calcium carbonate, the limestone um, in the water and then stuck um, on this hard bottom. Now, how have you uh, been getting on making your polyps? Um, does it look anything like this? Um, let's see, I'm going to have a little bit of biscuit. Um, so, so there we have the amazing um, coral polyp and now we're really, um, I think we've got about 10-15 minutes. In fact, can I, am I allowed to eat this? This is, this is, this is a curacao breakfast. So if, if you, apparently, I'm going I'm to have a munch, sorry I'm quite hungry. Ah. Um. And the sand as well. Um, I think I'm going to have something else tomorrow for breakfast. If that's okay. So that is how you make an incredible edible polyp. I'm just going to move this to one side. Um, oh, I've got a lovely aftertaste of bug spray um, as well, which is quite delicious. Um, but now, able to come on and answer some of the questions you've been sending in. Um, by the live chat. So we've got from um, uh, the Mead School. Do coral polyps have uh, predators? So there's some sort of predation in so far that an animal like a parrotfish is looking for algae mainly, but with its sharp beak, might um, chew around. Um, a coral colony and actually chew off some of the chalky substance and ingest some of the algae that might be growing on it and also the little coral animals. And out of the back of the parrotfish this is a cloud of white powder which chewed up this chalky substance and this will get if you're swimming near um, a parrotfish you'll often see this white powder at the back and that chewed up white powder um, if you've seen the tourist brochure with a beautiful uh, white beach, a lot of that um, beautiful white sand uh, will be parrotfish poop. But perhaps the most um, sort of voracious uh, coral predator, uh, especially on the Great Barrier Reef, is the crown of thorn starfish. Um, large starfish, uh, very, very spiky, very, very difficult uh, for other animals to eat. And you get these massive outbreaks um, of these starfish, and they just completely devastate areas of reef. And the way that they feed is they sort of latch on uh, to a bit of coral, a bit like this. They eject um, basically a, a sort of um, enzymes from the stomach uh, that sort of basically dissolves. Um, the, the coral tissue and then all that is ingested um, back into the um, starfish and then just keep on going. Um, there's actually, you might, if you search for crown of thorns, starfish and robot, you'll see that there's a, there's a number of sort of robot uh, designs out there designed to go and uh, autonomous, autonomously kill um, crown of thorns starfish. <coughs> um, so, we have um, great. Um, we've got a school from Greece who unfortunately lost the beginning of the presentation. Um, it will be available uh, on catch up on the website. Um, and also, there is a, a video of the incredible edible polyp uh, that we made on a previous trip 
um, on the website as well. So do watch that, and the team in London will put the URL for that up into the into the live chat or email it to you directly. Um, so really, we've got the the last ten minutes here to answer any questions uh, coming through on the live chat from from those classes watching. Um, and we'll be able to to highlight uh, some of the things um, that are are happening here. So one of the amazing things um, for me coming to um, research centres um, like this, like Kamabi here in Curaçao, um, is the ability to um, talk to scientists who are really at the cutting edge of where our sort of our knowledge of um, of the coral ecosystem, uh, whether that's the sponge team here, whether it's the coral restoration team, whether it's um, analysing, um, whether it's analysing um, the um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the, the coral spawning uh, that's been taking place over the past few weeks, and I think the team are, are actually uh, coral restoration, planting corals out on the reef, happening imminently. Um, happening happening um, this week now so we have um, how long has coral been around for um, I will have to get back to you on that it is many many millions of years and it all died back I'm trying to remember when um, to the coral triangle and that is um, an area um, an area which is um, in Southeast Asia, Coral Triangle, which is Indonesia, um, Philippines, Papua New Guinea. And all coral um, around the world has come from there. And the further you are from the Coral Triangle, um, the less diverse it is. So if you really want to see the most diverse corals, you head to the Coral Triangle. And that's where all the coral has come from. Um, and then it's made its way all the way um, here um, to the Caribbean. Um, next question, how do you examine corals um, without damaging them? Um, great question. Um, so a lot of it, there's a variety of different techniques um, that are used. Um, so um, let's, let's see, one of them is, is um, photo or video. You can go down and you can take photographs and you can do surveys like the Exile Catlin Seaview survey. Uh, taking sort of photographs across most of the world's um, major reef systems and that's one way of getting a record of abundance and diversity um, of different coral species but if you want to examine them um, without damaging them unfortunately you know you do have sometimes to get special permits to take samples um, of coral so there, there is there is a there is a small damage and and that's you know, we're hoping to look at different ways of recording um, what's down here without damaging. People are looking at doing underwater 3D scans and then pr printing out um, the scan of what's down down here um, back in the lab. So the different ways at the moment, you know, sampling, physical sampling, and collecting um, bits of coral is still part of science science research. So how long is it thought that we have until a point of irreversible change in terms of coral dying out completely? Um, you know, it depends on who you speak to. I think some people think that um, we're, we're sort of very nearly there. Um, most most scientists sort of I know sort of point to sort of mid-century if we carry on business as usual. That that's, we'll get to a point where um, that coral, the coral reef will be the first ecosystem um, that is completely destroyed by human activity, um, apart from you know a few remnants here or there. So, so coral, um, as an ecosystem, uh, very much on the front line of climate change. Um, and on I think Friday, uh, we're doing a uh, a lot of uh, work and focus and investigations looking at um, how coral might survive or adapt. Um, in a high CO2 world, um, so that's coming up on, on uh, this Friday. Uh, how um, uh, can we better protect 
uh, the coral from human destruction. Um, it's so the we'll come on a lot to to um, a bit more of this um, on Friday, but but for now there's two types of threats um, really. Um, there are these sort of system-wide threats, and that's really warming, ocean warming, and ocean acidification. And then we have local threats, which are things like overfishing, destructive fishing, um, coastal development, um, plastic pollution, other pollutions. I mean, I think that everything that you know, I'd, I'm not quite sure um, where exactly your your um, school is. But everything you do to protect your local ecosystem, um, because you know reducing carbon emissions and reducing the amount of bad things you put into the environment, and can um, will also help the coral reef. Um, so and and also just to remember that you don't. It's not just about taking action. You can also become an advocate, and that means talking to your representatives. Um, local politicians about the commitments to hold to um, the Paris agreements to that sort of 1.5 degrees sort of maximum increase um, of global temperatures. So the um, video will be archived um, by the end of today um, just to answer that and um, I think we've got time for I think two or three um, more questions um, before we wrap up um, this um, first live investigation today. Perfect. So thank you very very much. Uh, having having n n nothing quite come through um, I think we're just gonna um, thank you all very very much uh, for joining. Um, it's been wonderful having you. Oh, how many sp different species of, of, of coral are there? Um, what is the deepest that uh, corals can survive? We've got about um, corals down to about um, 3,000 uh, meters in terms of coral species. Um, I think it's on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Um, I think it is. Um, I think I think it's about 650, but let let me let me check that later. Um, and it's about 3,000 meters down. So I think we're just going to wrap that up for now. Thank you so much for being part of this live investigation, incredible edible polyp, and look forward to seeing you for the next sessions coming up.